bad girls you love to hate today on Judge Joe Brown. We're back with Judge Joe Brown. The plaintiff in this case says she loaned her car to her brother's girlfriend so she could take over the payments. She says the defendant crashed the vehicle while bar hopping and skipped out on paying for the damages. Let's take a look. Do you understand what your legal position was? Yeah. What? That I had possession of the vehicle, so therefore I was responsible for it. See, the vehicle rolled up. You damaged the bottom of the engine block. Yes. The, the engine had some damage, um, the front end at the bottom. That back bumper was already um, like that when she got the vehicle. <laughs> that runner was rusty. Both of them okay, were. Okay, from the impact is why The back of that vehicle had already now. been hit. The back so left the front corner panel right, had already fine. been hit. It's a 1998. It wasn't worth it to fix it. Judge Joe, <sighs> Ms. Celestine decided or opted to pay the uh, finance company thinking that they were going to forgive that other $2,900 debt. When they didn't forgive that debt, that's when she started basically harassing me, coming to my school in when front of my classmates. No, you are driving this vehicle. Ms. I offered pay to help Miss Celestine with the rest of that um, balance. She flat out said no. She wanted me to pay the whole thing. Well, you wrecked the car. Okay, if she, when she got the car, if she would have drove it back to the car lot, she still would have owed them $9,000. I did her a favor as well as she did me a favor. She would have still owed $9,000, whether she parked it there or whatever she did with it. So I did her a favor, and oh, in, in so turn, she did me a favor. Oh, so you were victimized by the plaintiff's generosity. No. Or circumstances. No. It's called a windfall. But I showed she, her generosity on, as well. well. Don't talk over It's me. not a one-way street. It's a two-way street. Not in this case. Mm. That was a circumstance that accrued to your benefit. It was a windfall. She's got a vehicle. I need a vehicle. So I'll take over the note. I didn't have a credit to get it. I've it got Section 8 housing credit. situation because I've got 13-year-old girl, 10-year-old boy, mm -hmm. and, and the plaintiff has zero children. So anything? you have what a problem. What does problems. that have to do with anything? It you has couldn't nothing afford to do with it. this case. I could afford it. I already had a vehicle. But well, my children what? have nothing to do with this case. Yes, they do. No, they you don't. Don't have money. <laughs> How do you and know what I have? Bottom you don't know line what is, I have. If you have money, then you're not entitled to Section 8 compensation. Okay. That's part of your defense. Okay. She threatened to block your Section 8 she status. She sure did, and she went I to the did. director and, of not, my hold school. On. And the bottom line too. is, is if you had had adequate credit, you would have gotten another vehicle if you wanted it. If you, you didn't, so. so you got the boon of taking so. over her payments after she got the credit. It was in her name. Her... Uh, circumstances were on top of the stove. She didn't want the heat to get turned up too hot. She didn't want to get burnt. <laughs> she's calling you the B word because she's angry. You're the one that's on Section 8 if she decided to call in and say, hey, do you guys know she was paying a note on this car? And by the way, why isn't she paying this as part of the copay on the housing? How do you know what I'm paying? You don't know what I'm paying. I'm never late with my rent, no matter what amount But you is. say you get and that a has something, nothing, excuse that me. That has nothing excuse to do me. with let this me, case well, if I it. pay my rent or if I don't pay my rent. So it has say nothing you, to do with this. So say you, no, and so in say, your ignorance, yeah, so I'm say not me. surprised so say me. It has that you nothing say to do that. With now, it. how much do you pay each month before this vehicle is wrecked to the plaintiff for the... $340 right, a month. All right, now... Uh, you say you already had a vehicle? Yes, I did. Well, do the Section 8 people... Yes, they do. ...operating an entity or administering an entity paid for by the taxpayers of the state of Minnesota, I believe it is, uh, know that you have 300-some-odd extra dollars a month? Because her brother paid the note. Thank you. And Your she brother paid the note? Her brother. <laughs> So if her brother was paying it, guess what? That was additional resource to your benefit, which required that you report it. It, by the way, is a felony in your state, both state and federal. That's welfare fraud. How do you figure I'm on welfare? Because I have you get Section, Section 8? 8. What the hell do you think you that is? You don't have to have no welfare to get Section 8. <laughs> if you're that ignorant. Yeah, I'm, I, I, I don't have anything to say to I you. Am. You are. I agree. Okay, listen to the judgment. <laughs> being wrong is one thing. Being massively wrong is another. You know, 
you really owe her six thousand five hundred and fifty dollars and the limit's five thousand i'll give you the whole five because she's got surplus money she doesn't need to have in her ignorant hands because she won't know what to do with it this courtroom is now in recess the defendant claims she was actually helping the plaintiff by even taking the car over in the first place doesn't seem like any big favor after she had the accident she'll pay now on to the next case